knee and leg injuries and disease this is for the first year PA student program these are my financial and related disclosures so here are the objectives number one to understand the pathophysiology assessment management and sequela of knee arthritis understand the assessment and management of bone injuries of the knee understand the assessment and management of cartilage and ligament injuries of the knee and to understand the assessment and management of tendon injuries and disorders of the knee right so four main topics I think that uh, you should be aware of and uh, hopefully understand how to clinically assess and evaluate these so this is right out of the textbook this is a uh, something they, they have at the beginning I think of many of the chapters in the AOS um, essentials book and uh, it's a good one to take a look at it's a good one to refer back to just keep in mind orthopedic injuries often exhibit with uh, somatic pain and often there's pain that you can really localize to one spot sometimes right to a, a finger um, point that is if a, if a patient can literally um, tell you that I have uh, pain right here and they can put their finger right on the patellar tendon um, there is a very good likelihood that's where your pathology is so remember your anatomy so the anatomy is really powerful um, when it comes to understanding orthopedics and I know that uh, it's a lot of anatomy it's hard to keep track of everything like that but the better you understand the anatomy the more this is going to make sense so let's start off with knee arthritis and related disorders so um, three main things I think you should be aware of uh, we're only, only going to cover two um, we're going to leave inflammatory arthritis for the um, rheumatology uh, specialists to uh, discuss at length so what about knee osteoarthritis um, we'll talk a little bit about that because orthopedic surgeons do get quite involved with the management of that and um, there's some surgical treatment you should be aware of so it is the most common form of knee arthritis it can occur as primary osteoarthritis or secondary uh, which could be the result of prior trauma to the articular surface so maybe you have somebody who injures their knee and rips off a big piece of articular cartilage or maybe has a fracture that goes into the joint and causes uh, uh, um, articular cartilage damage maybe a meniscal tear so the medial compartment uh, of the you know the, the tibiofemoral compartment is most frequently involved and here in this x-ray you can see a class of classic case where on both sides the medial compartment is involved primarily and that leads to varus and you can see if you were to uh, sort of look at how this patient's limb is uh, aligned you can see that the uh, the, the femoral head's probably up here and the patient's limb kind of comes down and goes like this so uh, this person could be very much bow-legged or varus need um, and uh, that is due to uh, this sort of collapse having occurring in the medial compartment right that is joint space collapse uh, or so-called joint space narrowing and um, because of where the mechanical axis falls in the knee it tends to occur more commonly on the medial uh, side of the knee or the medial compartment and um, uh, th this is uh, going to exhibit as oftentimes pain primarily on the medial side or the medial joint line um, and uh, this is something that usually is going to occur in older patients um, and uh, the other thing is it's worth pointing out some of the hallmark findings you should look for uh, on uh, radiograph um, primarily there's uh, there's really four things so there's you know joint space narrowing all right joint space narrowing subchondral sclerosis all right subchondral sclerosis osteophytes right so those sort of those like bone spurs those are osteophytes and uh, cysts or subchondral cysts these are little things that can uh, 
to develop in the subchondral bone. So those are some of the hallmark or radiographic findings of osteoarthritis. And um, this is something that when it becomes moderate to advanced is very easily diagnosed on radiograph. So clinical diagnosis, um, patient will present with pain, instability, maybe buckling symptoms, swelling. Uh, they could have um, deformity on exam, as you saw on that uh, last slide. They might have an effusion or fluid inside the knee joint. As I mentioned, joint line tenderness. They might have crepitus. So this is another key finding. Crepitus or like crepitations with range of motion because of either loose bodies or perhaps uh, um, articular surfaces that are no longer congruent. Now, plain x-rays, um, preferably weight-bearing x-rays or the you know, x-ray with the patient standing, uh, may show these um, key findings. Okay, and I kind of mentioned this. I wanted to sort of draw it on the slide where you had the x-ray. Um, and I'm not going to go into this in much further um, length, but uh, those are the key findings you look for on x-rays to diagnose this. So treatment is activity modification. Uh, so avoiding impact activities, for instance, would be one thing to tell the patient. Um, non steroidal anti-inflammatory medications, in some cases, intraarticular injection, like steroids, for instance, as an anti-inflammatory measure. Uh, physical therapy can be helpful to improve strength, um, uh, to uh, improve motion in a stiff joint, and improve overall balance. And there is a role for surgical treatment, particularly uh, for total joint arthroplasty or joint replacement for end-stage arthritis. Now, inflammatory arthritis, um, we're not going to really get into. This is often due to autoimmune disease. I don't even have the right picture here uh, for it, but this is something that uh, you will discuss more with um, in the rheumatology section. What about patellofemoral disorders? Well, they can cause anterior knee pain, and this is important actually. It's worth uh, sort of emphasizing this. Anterior knee pain, right? So anytime you have somebody who has anterior knee pain, even if it's anterior joint line pain, like here or here, you're like, you know what, it's a joint line, it's probably a meniscal tear. It's probably a patellofemoral disorder actually. So anything in that anterior part of the knee, on or around the kneecap, Think about patellofemoral disorders. Uh, a couple of things you got to also distinguish is distinguish patellofemoral pain from patellofemoral malalignment. Okay, so uh, malalignment is uh, something that can happen when the uh, patella is not tracking properly. Okay, so here is an example of malalignment where you can see, and here you can see as well, uh, compare that to this, right? So you can see. Typically, you have, and I'm going to just outline this, you have this sort of trochlear groove here where the patella should be sitting in, and it's not articulating congruently at all. You can see the patella is out here. Now, contrast that with this, where you have relatively congruent uh, joint. So that could be due to patella femoral malalignment. And that's something that if you strengthen the muscles on this side or do a surgery to bring the patella, uh, to bring the patella over, I'll try to draw that a little bit better, to bring the patella over a little bit, then you may be able to correct the malalignment. Um, so it's two different things. You can just have pain or you can have uh, some true malalignment. Another thing is don't call it chondromalacia unless you definitely know this cartilage pathology. Uh, a lot of people like to just say anybody with patellofemoral pain has chondromalacia. That may not necessarily be true. Treatment, well, it's usually treated with physical therapy. This is not a case where um, surgical treatment has a big role except in malalignment. So in cases of severe malalignment, you may have to consider surgical correction to realign mechanically uh, how the patella tracks in the patellofemoral joint. Okay, but a lot of other cases of patellofemoral pain are not treated surgically, but they're treated with quadriceps strengthening and physical therapy. And sometimes non steroidal anti-inflammatory medications and similar conservative measures. All right, so I'm gonna pause there and then we'll uh, 
talk about uh, fractures in the next uh, section. Thanks.